Hello and welcome to uh, this tutorial on Australian Guide to Legal Citation Referencing Style, which we call AGLC, uh, for UTS law students and anybody else who wants to find out about this legal referencing style, um, AGLC. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen with you in a minute to show you our website, the UTS Library website, and where you can find all the supporting material um, that's, that's going to help you with understanding this style and using this style. Uh, and then we'll go through a whole lot of examples and I'll show you some of the details of how that style works. So I'll click on this link to share you the screen and then we'll go to the library's website. Here we are. Uh, you can just Google UTS Library. Uh, and where all our AGLC referencing material lives is under this referencing tab on our website. And then you'll see in the top of the page here our link to the AGLC information. So on this page, uh, the most important link is probably this first one, which is the actual AGLC guide itself. You can download your own uh, PDF version of that guide from the University of Melbourne. Uh, it's quite good. I'd recommend you download yourself a copy and refer to that often. Uh, even if you're using uh, referencing software like EndNote or Zotero, it's still really useful to understand how the style works. Um, so I do recommend you have a look and familiarize yourself with that book. It is quite long. So just dip into it from time to time uh, when you need to reference something. Uh, we have copies in the library, but there's not too many of those and they're often on loan. Uh, you can reserve them though. Uh, we've got some videos which we've made here in the library which cover all the basics. Um, and I'd recommend you have a look at those too. They're only a couple of minutes long each. Um, we've got a link to our condensed version which just covers the basics. Um, and finally, the class handout, which I'm gonna use in this tutorial uh, to go through um, some examples and show you some of the different features of AGLC referencing. Um, so I've already got this open. So if you want to follow along with me, I'll get you to open, click on this link here uh, and open the PDF file um, that is the, the AGLC class handout. So I'm just going to click on the link. So here we are. So this is our class handout. Uh, and first of all, what is AGLC? So we're using the fourth edition. Uh, it's a little over a year old now. Um, and uh, that's the current version that pretty much everybody now in Australia is using. The key features of AGLC are that we cite our references in footnotes at the bottom of each page. And then finally, at the end, we have a reference list uh, where the references are grouped together in categories. So all of our articles and books are grouped together, basically our secondary sources. Uh, we have all our cases grouped together, uh, all our legislation grouped together, all our treaties grouped together, and then all our other material like websites and parliamentary debates and so on all grouped together as well into those five categories. We'll talk about those later. Uh, so first of all, we'll start talking about in-text citation, or, so in the footnotes citation, and here's the first type of thing we'll, we'll learn how to cite, which is a case. Um, so in AGLC, we have the party names in italics. We have the year in either round brackets or square brackets. We have the volume number of the law report series and then the abbreviation of that series. CLR, for example, stands for Commonwealth Law Reports. And then the, the next number is the, the number of the first page within that volume where that law report starts. So this would read that the case is Smith and Jones. It's in the 2009 volume, which is volume 89 of the Commonwealth Law Reports. And if you go to that volume 89 and open it up at page 78, you'll find that law report. Um, obviously, these uh, law reports are all online these days, but older ones you might need to still consult in print. So it is a good idea to understand how these work. Um, occasionally, we have a format like this where the year is in square brackets, often without a volume number. Um, the difference is really left over from uh, the days when things were not online. And a round bracket year means that when you're looking for this on a library shelf, uh, the volume is the thing you're looking for, not the year. So you'd be looking for volume 89 of the Commonwealth Law Reports, not the 2009 volume. Whereas if the year's in square brackets, it's the year that's important, not the volume. So you'd be looking in the shelves for volume two, the year 2008 volume, uh, and that's, that's how you'd find it. You do sometimes get volume numbers with these square bracket 
uh, law reports, New South Wales law reports is an example where you often have volume numbers um, and some of the other, some of the British ones also have numbers like King's Bench and Queen's Bench, but generally speaking, the square bracket ones tend not to have volume numbers and the round brackets nearly always do have volume numbers. Uh, and then we have a third format for citing cases, which we call medium neutral. So these are only available online. They look a little bit like this square bracket one up here, um, but in fact, they're fairly different. So we've got the party names and the year in square brackets, but now instead of a law report or abbreviation, it's the, the court abbreviation. In this case, it's the High Court of Australia, HCA. And the 35 isn't a first page number, it's a judgment number. And in this case, it means that that's the 35, 35th case decided by the High Court in the year 2009. As I say, they're only available online, so page numbers are irrelevant. They don't have page numbers at all. Um, and when we cite uh, parts of these medium neutral, uh, medium neutral reports, we, we cite paragraph numbers rather than page numbers, but we'll come back to that later. So the key features are all the party names in italics, the year in either round brackets or square brackets, sometimes a volume number, then either the law report abbreviation or the court abbreviation, and then finally either the first page number or, if it's medium neutral, the judgment number. And then finally, all citations in footnotes in AGLC, whether they're cases or anything else, always end in a full stop. That's legislation. I mean, so that's cases. So we'll move on to legislation. That's quite a lot easier. There's really only one format for legislation or for an act, which is that the act name and year come in italics, followed by in brackets, the jurisdiction where that act applies in round brackets. And that's not in italics. So the act and the year of the act are in italics, but the jurisdiction in round brackets is not in italics. Um, in Australia, we have six states, two territories, and the Commonwealth. So there are relative ju relevant jurisdictions. So these are the official abbreviations that you would use for those jurisdictions. CTH for Commonwealth, and then the others are fairly straightforward. Um, you do sometimes also see New Zealand in Z or UK if you're referring to some legislation from another country. So that's perfectly fine. You can use those um, those abbreviations for those other countries as well. But Generally speaking, in Australian law, we tend to refer to uh, Australian legislation, obviously. Uh, moving on to the journal articles. Uh, so we have the authors up front. We then have the title of the article in single quotes. The year in round brackets. Very occasionally this comes in square brackets, but it's really quite unusual. Then we have a volume number straight away in round brackets, the issue number the journal title in italics, and finally, the first page where that journal article begins in that volume. Um, you'll, if, if the year is in square brackets, you'll often see them without a volume number because the square brackets mean that the year is the critical thing, not the volume number. So they often have that year in square brackets because maybe they don't have volume numbers. So you'll sometimes see an issue number all by itself without saying in this case the number 40, but the year in square brackets. So that's another format you do sometimes see, but that's much rarer than the round bracket one with the volume number. Um, if we have two authors, so this has just got the one author, James Brown. If we have two authors, you just connect them with the word and, so it's James Brown and Mary Jones. And you'll notice that we put first name, last name or family name. With three authors, it's the same deal. John Brown, comma, Mary Jones, and Roger Smith. So we put all three authors, followed by that comma. And then finally, if there's more than three, we use this convention uh, with an abbreviation et al, which in Latin just stands for and others. So that's James Brown, et al, James Brown, and other people. Um, and that, that means there's more than three altogether. And notice there's no full stop after the et al. So that would just go James Brown, et al, comma, and then straight into these other details. So no matter how many authors there are, the secondary part of the, the citation, which is the title of the article, the year in round brackets, volume, the issue in round brackets, 
the journal title in italics and the first page all are the same, no matter how many authors we have. And again, always ending in a foot stop for all footnotes in AGLC. Uh, we have now two books, so that's a little bit simpler. Uh, we have the author again, exactly the same rules for authors of books as for authors of journal articles. First name, last name, and two or three authors, exactly the same format. More than three also uses et al. Uh, and then international law is our book title in italics. And then in round brackets, the publication details. So it's the name of the publisher. If there's an edition number, we don't put the first edition. If there's a first, if it's a first edition, so you only put this edition number in if it's uh, a later edition than the first one. Uh, and then finally, the year of publication, and then we close our brackets and put a full stop for the end of the footnote. So the author is exactly the same for journal articles, the title of the book in italics, and then the publisher information, all in round brackets. As I said here in the, the guide, we don't mention if it's a first edition, so we just have nothing if it's a first edition. Uh, web pages is a little different. Um, we don't often have a human author for a web page. If we did, it would just go in front of the title here. But generally speaking, with a web page, we don't tend to have a human author listed. So we just go straight into the title. It's a bit like a journal article. We go straight into the title. Then we have the, um, the website that publishes that page. Um, sorry, the light's just gone out. Hang on a second. Uh, yes, the place that publishes that page. And then in round brackets, the type of website it is. So most of the time it'll just be web page, but you might have other things like Twitter or blog post or some sort of other social media page, a comma, and then the date, which might be a year. It might be a full date. So you put as much of the date as you can find on the website. So it could be a, a day and a month, a second that's two March 2019, or it could be just a year. Sometimes you don't even have a date at all. So if you really can't find a date on the web page at all, you just leave it out altogether. So then you just have web page and then close brackets if there's no year listed. So as I said here, you would just have web page close bracket if there's not a year. Um, and it does look a bit funny because we start straight away with the title of the web page in single quotes. So this is a reference to our AGLC guide that this uh, document that we're looking at right now sits on top, it sits off. So that's just the title of the page. ETS Library publishes it, it's a web page and it was published then. So that gives us our detail. We don't need to say what the date was that we viewed the page. So that's a nice change in AGLC. We don't need to put in the date that we looked at any web pages. We just put the detail of the page. Oh, and finally, after those round brackets, of course, it was sitting down here where I didn't see it properly, we have the URL of the page itself. Uh, the URL comes in these funny little angle brackets. So straight after the, the year, when we close the brackets, we have the URL in these angle brackets, and finally close off with a full stop, as in all footnotes. Um, with these web pages, this last point is quite important. So most references in AGLC don't have a URL attached to them, even though a lot of the time, if not most of the time, you're looking at something online. So these days, legislation and cases, you'll pretty much all be viewing those online. Uh, most material you'll be able to view online in one way or another, but we don't put a web page and, uh, sorry, a URL, unless it's specifically a web, a web page. Online articles, online books, online cases, online legislation. Uh, we almost never put a, a URL for those unless there's some very special reason for doing it. Um, so you only ever normally see URLs for specifically internet materials, which are what the guide calls these things, which are things that are only available on the internet and never had any other format uh, and, and never could have any other format. Okay, so that's citing the various types of uh, the various types of references in AGLC. Pinpoints is uh, what comes next, which is a very important part of reference referencing in AGLC. Uh, I've said here sometimes we want to specify a location within a citation where the information comes from, and particularly for a quote. 
In fact, it's not just sometimes, it's very often uh, we want to specify a location within the citation. So we put our case in the footnote. Here's our example here, that the first page is 78, but really we want to talk about something that happened on page 79. Uh, so we need to, to point out that we're really referring to something that happened on page 79 of this particular case report. So the general rule is, if the pinpoint does not follow a bracket, as in this case, uh, we add a comma and then a number, whereas if it does follow a bracket, we don't put a comma. So for example, in that third example here, legislation, we've got the Crimes Act, close bracket, New South Wales. The pinpoint directly follows that section 41A, directly follows our bracket, so we don't have a pinpoint, uh, don't have a comma. These ones, we do have a comma because the pinpoint follows a number, not a bracket. And you'll see in that fifth example with our Mary Smith book, uh, the book citation ends in a round bracket, so we don't have a comma, we just go straight onto the pinpoint. So these pinpoints mean page 79 of this report, which starts on page 78. Here's a medium neutral report, so that's judgment number 35, but we're referring here to pa paragraph six, and the square brackets tells us that that's a reference to a paragraph. For legislation, we need to put this little S for section 41A, SS, if you're referring to multiple sections in the same pinpoint. Here we've got our, our Mary our James Brown journal article that starts on page 17, but we want to refer to something on page 19. And then our book, Mary Smith, page 73 of that book, no comma because of that round bracket. And then finally, our web page uh, citation to our UTS's AGLC guide. But because web pages are also don't tend to have uh, page numbers, we generally refer to in pinpoints to paragraph numbers within the web page. So this would be paragraph three. And the trick here is whereas all the other ones, the pinpoint comes at the end of the, the footnote, the footnoted citation, in a web page pinpoint, the square brackets paragraph citation comes in front of the URL. So it goes after the closed bracket of the date and the information about what kind of site it is. We have our paragraph pinpoint, and then after that, we have the URL and the full stop. So it's a bit tricky, the position of the pinpoint for a paragraph pinpoint for a website is after the publication information, but in front of that URL. Uh, when we repeat a citation in consecutive footnotes, so one straight after the other, that's easy. Uh, we use this word ibid or ibid. So ibid is just Latin for uh, the same thing. So we have Smith and Jones, blah, blah, and 57, so footnote 56, footnote 57, exactly the same thing, ibid. That means exactly the same, so it also means we're referring to page 79 of that citation. If we want to refer to a different page number of the same thing, straight after, so 58, ibid 80 means footnote, so we're referring to page 80 now of this Smith and Jones case, and you'll notice that there's no comma after the ibid. So that's another example where we don't have a comma, we just have the number of the pinpoint following immediately after the word ibid. And there's no full, there's a full stop after ibid if it's by itself, but when there's a pinpoint, the full stop shifts to the end of the footnote and there's not a full stop after the word ibid when there's a pinpoint following. I hope that makes sense. Um, the tricky part of all of this is where we have repeated citations in non-consecutive footnotes. In other words, where they're not directly following, but there's something else in between that makes things a bit complicated. There's two kind of formats here. Um, basically, if there's an author, a human author, then we use the surname of the author, followed by, in round brackets, this little N plus a number symbol. So that means we're referring in this repeated footnote, and there's some examples we'll have a look at down below, to something by Smith, which is in footnote number one. And that footnote number one means that's the first time we've cited it in the document, in footnote number 
Um, if it was a couple of authors, we'd, we'd use both their surnames. So here's Smith and Jones, and we're citing it for the first time in footnote number two. Okay, so we don't use the first names of the authors when we're in these non-consecutive citations. Uh, we just use their surnames. Um, when there's no author, so no human author, we need to specify what's called in AGLC a short title in the original citation. So the short title comes at the end and it has this format, round brackets, short title in single quotes. And the short title will be in italics or not in italics, depending on the format of the original title. So we'll see that in example. Um, usually, or nearly always, the short title of the case uh, will be the name of the first party. Um, unless the first party is the crown, which you'll see as, a, as the letter R, in which case we use the second party. Um, if there's a popular case name, in fact, we'd use that in preference to either. So something like the Marbo case, uh, we'd use that popular case name um, for it. So if there's a popular case name, you'd use that for the short title. But generally speaking, there isn't a popular case name. So we'd use the first, first party name uh, for the short title, or if the first party is the crown, uh, we'd use the second party name. And for an act, it's usually just the name of the act. If it's short, if it's a very long name, we use a few distinguishing words to make that first title, that short title. And you get to pretty much pick those distinguishing words yourself as long as they make sense uh, with regard to the full name of the act. So here's some examples. Footnote number six, we have our reported case, Smith and Jones, we're pinpointing to page 58 of this case and we put our short title after the pinpoint so right at the very end, it's in italics because the name of the case is in italics and we put it in single quotes and in round brackets. That's just the standard format. Then we have footnote number seven, which is a medium neutral case, the Crown and Wilson. Because the Crown is the first party here, our short title is the name of the second party, which is Wilson. And we're pinpointing to paragraph three. And I know that's a paragraph because it's in square brackets. And then finally, in uh, footnote eight here, we have the Crimes Act, New South Wales, 19, uh, 1900 New South Wales. We're referring here to a pinpoint section 41A, and the short title of that is just easy because the name of the act itself is very short. We don't put the year in the short title, it's just the name of the act, but without the year. Um, and then finally, we have our, our, uh, an article here by Mary Brown and Charles Roberts, it's in the UTS, I've just made this article up. It's just a, a pretend article in the UTS Law Review. We don't need to have a short title for this one because the authors effectively are going to be the short title or the surnames of those authors because we have authors. So footnote number 10, it's non-consecutive. It doesn't follow straight after the first time it's been cited. So we use the short title, Smith, again in italics, N6 means it's first referred in the document in footnote number six, and we're pinpointing to page 59, which is a different place from the original pinpoint, which was 58. Page 58. There's no comma because the pinpoint immediately follows a round bracket. Similarly, footnote 11, we're referring to our medium neutral case back in footnote seven. The short title was Wilson, so we're saying Wilson. Footnote number seven was the first time we referred to it, and we're doing a different pinpoint this time to paragraph six. Again, no comma because there's a round bracket there. Our Crimes Act, back in footnote number eight. Now in footnote number 12, it's not straight after it, so we have to use the short title, Crimes Act. Round brackets N8, meaning the first time it was cited was in footnote eight. And now we're pinpointing to section 58, a different section to that first one. And lastly, our book, Brown and Roberts. We've got authors, so we just use Brown and Roberts, the two authors' surnames. N9 means first time cited in footnote nine. And now we're pinpointing, instead of to page 22, now we're pinpointing it to page 24. So note that the pinpoints in footnotes seven and 11 that's our medium neutral 
citation are enclosed in square brackets because there's a paragraph number. And that's because the, the original case, which is in footnote seven, is media neutral. Short titles are in italics if the full titles are in italics. So here our short title, the surnames, are not in italics because the original authors here are also not in italics. So the short titles pick up the formatting of the original title or the original thing that's being used. Hope that makes sense. Moving on to the reference list. Uh, the reference list, so as I mentioned right at the very start, our reference list is divided up into categories. And there's up to five of these. Articles, books, reports, basically our secondary resources uh, that fit into those categories broadly. We have our cases, legislation, treaties, if there are any, and then other, which basically means websites and some miscellaneous things like parliamentary debates um, and a few other resources that don't fit into any of these other categories. Um, this sec first dot point here is quite important. You can leave out any category that you don't use. Quite often, unless you're doing international law, you probably won't need to refer to any treaties um, and you may or may not need to refer to legislation. Um, they're sometimes listed with an A, B, C, D, E in front of them. So we have A articles, B cases, C legislation, D treaties and E others. You can leave those out if you want to. Um, and within each category, the references are grouped in alphabetical order. But all our cases, books and reports within that category would be in alphabetical order, all the cases in alphabetical order, all the legislation in alphabetical order and so on. Um, a couple of special things about the reference list. So basically, the references in the, the reference list are the same. They look exactly like the footnote references, but a couple of important differences. So first of all, the references in the reference list never end in a full stop. So in footnotes, they always do, uh, but in the reference list, they never do. So that's one difference. You never have a pinpoint in the reference list. You just have the regular citation with no print points ever. We don't include any short titles in the reference list. Um, and one important point too, if the reference list has a human author, so in other words, somebody with a first name and a last name, the first of those authors is switched around the surname, comma, first name. And this is in order to um, maintain our alphabetical order in our list of articles, books and reports. So these things in that first category generally have are written by people. Um, and if you want to have alphabetical order, the alphabetical order needs to be by the surnames of those people. And it makes things much easier to read if the first author, as in this case here, is flipped around so it comes surname, comma, first name. Only the first one, so for example, here's an example where there's two authors in the reference list. James Brown gets flipped around as the first author, but Mary Jones and any other authors that you might have um, are still in that format, first name, last name. So it's only the very first author that gets flipped around in this way, because that's the only one you need to flip around if you're trying to order those articles and books and so on by alphabetical order of the surname of the first authors. Um, so it's fairly straightforward to write your references. Just remember you have to categorize it, don't need all those categories, so just use the ones you need. And then these four dot points, which give you the differences between the format in the footnote and the format in the reference list. So I'll just repeat that again. So in, in the reference list, the references never end in a full stop. References in the reference list never have pinpoints. They never have short titles. And the first author, if there is a first author, if you've got something with authors, the first author's surname and first name are switched around so that they have this format, surname, comma, first name, uh, but it's only the first author. So as we saw in this one, Mary Jones is as it was in the footnote, it's just James Brown that gets flipped around. Back on our, our website, we have a lot more uh, help, as I mentioned, we saw that page when we first went to it. You can also ask at the library service desk and on our library website, there's a, a link called help that will lead you through to our online chat service. So feel free to 
uh, send us a message on that online chat service. Uh, you won't necessarily get somebody who knows too much about AGLC on the online chat, but they can always refer you on to somebody else who can help you. Um, and now for some bonus material. So that's the, that's the end of the main tutorial. So you can stop here if you like. Um, but I'm just going to go on a little bit with our non-consecutive uh, repeated citations because there's a couple, of, um, a couple of things that can happen that do happen from time to time that's good to know about. So first of all, um, with our non-consecutive citations here, for example, Brown and Roberts back here, that Mary Brown and Charles Roberts, Brown and Roberts are the surname. But what if Mary Brown wrote something else with somebody called Bill Roberts? Well, it would look at Brown, you know, because we're only using the surnames, we'd have Brown and Roberts still. And AGLC says that short titles can never be the same for references that are not the same. So Mary Brown and Bill Roberts would be not the same as Mary Brown and Charles Roberts. So we can't have Brown and Roberts for both of them. And the solution uh, that AGLC comes up with is that we include the first name if that's needed to distinguish. So this would be Brown and Charles Roberts for our repeated citation. And then any other reference to an article by say Brown and Bill Roberts, Mary Brown and Bill Roberts would be Brown and Bill Roberts in those non-consecutive ones. So that's what this first bonus material is. So we have say Mary Brown, the role of the High Court, and then some other Brown, James Brown, referencing a UTS. Um, so we can't have Brown for the first one and Brown for the second one because they're the same short title and AGLC doesn't like having the same short title, even though you would think that the first, oh, there's the light again, hang on. Even though you would think that um, having a reference to the first footnote is enough, so you know, we're referring back to footnote number five, so it's clearly on, clearly the Mary Brown one. And this one's going back to footnote number six, so that's clearly the James Brown one. But AGLC says, no, that's not enough. We need to distinguish the short titles specifically, and we do that by putting in their first name. So the first name of the different, so where they're, where they're different, you have to put the first name. So if it was Mary Brown um, and Bill Bloggs, and Mary Brown and, Mary, and James Brown and Fred Bloggs, um, you'd have to put the surnames of the ones where they're, where they're the same surname, you'd have to put the first names of all those ones where the first where the surnames are the same. The other thing that comes up is uh, they might have, two people might have, or one person might have written different things. So here's an example where Mary Brown and Charles Roberts wrote two different articles. So they wrote an article in 2018, the role of the Attorney General, and they both of them wrote another article called International Law in 2016. And so we can't have Brown and Roberts for both of them, but they're, dif but they're different. We can't put the first names in because they're the same as well now. So it doesn't help to put Mary Brown and Charles Roberts because they're both Mary Brown and Charles Roberts. So the next thing we have to put in is the title of the article. So that's the thing that makes them different, is the fact that they've written two different things and those two different things have different titles. So we can still keep the Brown and Roberts because that's not needed anymore. It doesn't help us to put their first name, so it's still Brown and Roberts. But now, instead of going straight onto N9 and N10, we put the first part of the rest of the citation, the title in there, then the reference to the particular footnote number and any pinpoint comes after the N9 or the N10. So this time we're referring to page 27 of footnote 9 and here page 32 of footnote number 10. So that's our little bonus material. If we have two different authors with the same surname, we put the first names in and if we have articles by the same person or the same couple of people, whether they're the exact same people or the same, certainly with people with the same names, then we use the title to distinguish between the two. And that title might be a book title as well. So maybe Mary Brown, the second thing here could have been a book called International Law. That book title would be in italics. So here in that repeated citation, if that was a book, that title of the book would be in italics. So the, the format of the title follows 
the format of the thing originally. So here we've got journal titles, so they're in single quotes, but if it was a book title, it would be in italics, but down here, the book title would be in italics. Um, thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope that's been helpful. Um, back on our web page, you'll find all that useful information. So this is our AGLC guide off our library website, the full AGLC guide, our videos, and the handout that I just worked my way through uh, with you, our condensed guide. And please do contact us in the library if you have any questions. Uh, my name's Patrick, but there's a whole team of us that can answer your AGLC questions. So please don't be shy, come to the desk or go to online chat and somebody will be able to help you. Thank you very much, I hope that was useful. Bye now.